So uh, welcome to this talk on the future of JavaScript is AI. My name is, my clicker is broken. Ah, my name is Asim Hussein. You can find me on Twitter as Jawache, not Jawache, Jawache. Um, I blog about Angular and JavaScript on my website, codecraft.tv. And I'm also a, a cloud advocate at Microsoft. So if you don't know who we are, we are uh, the open source advocates working on the Azure cloud platform. If you go to our if you go to the link there, you'll find, a, you find all of us. Basically, there's me in the top there. We've all, we focus on all different technologies and areas. My focus is JavaScript and, and web. Well, actually, I've gone into leadership now, so my focus is people. But, um, but yeah, if you want to find out more about us, go into that website and just uh, uh, yeah, chase people up. Um, I also work with a charity called PAL Internship. And what they do is they help find Palestinians internships in high-tech Israeli startups. And I'm, I, last year, I, I mentored about 10 of them. It's a really, really hard work mentoring 10 people. But I mentored 10 of them. And this year, I'm very, very proud to say that 17 of the interns are all being mentored by one cloud advocate from Microsoft. So um, if any of you work with or for or at uh, a startup or, or a high-tech company in Israel and you have a space or an opening for an intern, give me a shout. I'll connect you in, in, in with the program director and we can get the ball rolling. Here we go. Anybody here, uh, anybody here know about Udemy? Anybody here, my students on Udemy? One, hi, thank you, thank you. Pays my mortgage. Um, so on Udemy, like this is a year, over a year ago now, they added in automatic subtitling. And so they correctly <laughs> uh, spelt my name correctly. So my name is awesome. And uh, this talk should be very awesome. Um, I also uh, co-organize uh, a meetup group in London called AI JavaScript uh, London. So I co-organized it with my friend Eleanor Haproff. Um, we started it uh, early last year. Um, it's been running very successful. I think we've got about 1,700, 1,800 members now. Um, and we run some pretty regular sessions all the way through last year. And uh, what happened was at the end of these sessions, people would come up to us and they'd kind of give us a link to some, hey, look at this JavaScript, AI-powered JavaScript ap application. Isn't it cool? And we thought, you know, it's fantastic. It's really cool. Let's put them all together in a website so everybody else can find them. And that's what we did. So we made a website called AIJS Rocks. And if you go to AIJS Rocks, what you'll find is a whole collection of AI-powered JavaScript applications. Now, they're JavaScript and they're on the web, which means that you can play around with them. It also means you can usually view source and see how it's working. But at the very least, it'll come up with or have a link to the source code or an, an article or a video explaining how it was made. And the, the idea is to inspire you with an application. And then if you like it, you can dig into it and learn a little bit more and learn a little bit more. And that's, that's, that, that's been my journey into uh, machine learning and JavaScript has been, has been that process. So I recommend doing that yourself. And in this talk today, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go through three of the applications which you can find on AIJS Rocks. I'm going to explain how they work. And then hopefully through that whole process, you're going to learn throughout the course of today, throughout the course of this lecture talk, you're going to learn a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more about what's possible and achievable with AI and machine learning in JavaScript right now. I know there's been a couple of talks already in this conference on these topics, but um, I, th I suppose my talk is probably going to be a bit more higher level, give you a bit more of a broader viewpoint of what's possible. So let's start off with the first application. It's called the Mojifier. It's not trademarked. It's just the Mojifier, so it made sense. Um, and this is actually my application. I built this application, and it's going to change everything. Yeah. So what does it do? You can give an image. It will detect any faces in the image. 
It will then detect the emotion in the face. It will then, any guesses? It will mojify it. That's right, it will detect, it will grab the appropriate emoji, <laughs> stick it on the face, and post it right back at you. Yeah, Elon Musk has got nothing on me. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I, I am open for investment. I hear Singapore's a startup hotspot. Um, you can use it in many different ways. So um, you can use it as a Slack application. So in fact, if you go to themojify.com and you just click that Add to Slack button, it will add it to your own Slack workspaces right now. Um, this is how it works. So you basically find an image. This is my son. Mm, yeah. Slash Mojify. Put the pasty image in. Yeah. That's the appropriate emoji for that one. It can handle multiple people. So if you grab that one in, there we go, that, that there. Wow, well, probably accurate. <laughs> and I, and I, uh, it answers an age-old question that has been plaguing people for... There you go. That's the Mona Lisa smile. There you go. So the Mojify does quite a lot. There's a whole lot of things that it's doing. But I think the most impressive thing that it's doing is it's how the hell is it calculating emotion? Emotion, right? It's kind of, kind of a complex thing. A lot of us can't really tell other people's emotion. But how is a computer figuring that out, right? And I've got good news for you. It's really easy. It's incredibly easy. It's only got two steps. Just two steps. Okay, first step, detecting the facial features. We know how to do this now. We've examined enough faces. We know the different points that every single face has. And so we basically, there's def different algorithms that you can get. Some of them are very arithmetic, and some of them are a little bit more uh, 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 machine learning based. But essentially, there's, main, there's, there's lots of different algorithms that you can use, which can, which if given an image, will extract for you those facial features. And every single face has one of those features, has a set of those features. Okay, that's step one. And step two is really, really easy. You just use a neural network. So that's it, just two steps. Extract the features, and then just train and use a neural network. Let's move on. Do you want me to explain? You know, just, just for this guy, gentleman at the front. I'll explain a neural network just for, just for him over there. I know everybody else knows what, what they are now. Um, but a neural network is, is, uh, has a basis in biology. Okay, this is a neuron. You should have at least one of these. Um, maybe some of you have a few less than you did yesterday. Um, but it has some dendrites going in, a body, a body, and, some, and an axon going out. If, if enough electricity flows in through the dendrites, the body fires some electricity out through an axon. That's it. That's all it does. If you stick enough of these together, you get a brain that can think, right? That's it. That's a neural network. That's, that's, well, that's a brain, I should say. Um, you, if I asked you to code this up in JavaScript, you'd probably kind of try and give it a go. It's been a long time since I've kind of studied the, the computer science basics right now, but I still remember some of it. I'd create a node. Uh -huh. I'd create some edges. Aha, graph theory. Ah, I know what I'm talking about. Get some edges going in and an edge going back out. Um, and then what are your features? What are the things you're, you're pumping into? What, do you, what, do you, what are the inputs and what's the output? Let's say this neural network, this very one neuron, neural network, you're going to pump in the day of the year, 23, and maybe the temperature on that day. That's the inputs. Then for each of the edges, you basically create a random number. You initialize it with a random number, right, math.rand. Maybe that got initialized with minus 0.5. Maybe that's got 2.1. You multiply them together. You add them up, and you pump them through an activation function. Okay, and whatever that function pumps out, that's electricity going back out. That's how you would simulate that in code. That's it just to see a little bit more about how that might work. Boom, it's just this, this is it. 
some input features, you multiply them by the weights, you sum them together, whatever that number is, you pass it into the activation function, and whatever that pumps out, you pump out. That's just a neuron. That's all you're doing. When I, when I teach, if some of you are coming to my workshop later on, at some point in the workshop, you'll just be like, Asim, it's just multiplication. I mean, yeah, it's just multiplication, like a large part of it, right? That's what, that's what it's all about, right? Um, but basically, act, there's loads of different activation functions out there. This is a, a very, very simple one. Anything below zero is zero. Anything above zero is one. There's loads of other ones you can use. Um, and basically, you just grab a bunch of those neurons together, and you create a network. This is a, this is a simple feed-forward neural network. Did anybody see that? No? It's raining. Um, and so what you do, you, you, you connect them all together. But remember, you initialize all of those edges with random numbers. right? But then for this kind of neural network, you need a training set. Let's say we've got a whole bunch of images that we've already gathered. We've already figured out where all the facial features are in this image. Okay. There's data sets out there that are available with all this stuff, right? We've already, features, uh, already figured out what the facial features are of, the, of this image. I mean, actually, we also know the emotion in it as well. We pump those features in. Maybe the features are kind of the XY coordinates of each pupil and other things. We, we pump those in. We multiply it all across, and it gives us a number at the end, right? We, we though, what does three mean? Like, we've decided, actually, that in this neural network, uh, zero maybe is unhappy and ten is happy, right? Someone has, a human being has looked at that image and they said, that's eight. So we know it's wrong. Of course it's wrong. You initialize a bunch of random numbers and multiply them together. It's not gonna, it's not finished, right? It's just starting off. Of course it's wrong, right? But, the, but what we need to do is we need to adjust those numbers based off of how wrong it is. So we, we know because we know this data that it's off by five. This is the magic. You use an algorithm, you use a technique called back propagation. Okay? Given how wrong the network is, how do you tweak those numbers so the next time you run it, it's more right? Okay? That's back propagation. And that's what you do. And so then it tweaks it, perhaps. You, you keep on running it with your data, and you keep on running it with data until it gets less wrong, less wrong, less wrong, less wrong. And so eventually, what happens is you give it an eight image, and it, it correctly predicts that it's eight. Okay? That process is training a neural network. All it's doing is it's tweaking those weights so the next time you go through, it becomes better and better and better. Okay. That's how you could do it. So you, there are actually well-known data sets out there that you can get that are freely available, which have a whole bunch of images, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 100, I don't know how many images, loads of images. Each image has been, a human being has gone through and, de and determined what emotion it is, and you can build and train a neural network in order to detect emotion. Okay? That's what you could do. Okay? But a lot, what's, ha what's been happening over the last two years, one of the, there's lots of things happening in this space over the last two years, what's really been happening in the last two years is a commoditization of these services, especially with very, very commonly used models. A lot of different companies, Microsoft included, have been making them available via APIs. And that's what I use. That's what I use for this service. I use something called the Face API, which you can get from Azure. Um, and it's very, very, very easy to use. You basically just post an image to that URL, and it gives you some data back. At the back end, it's using something exactly like I've showed you. It's been trained on a much, much bigger data set over much, much, much longer a time. But it gives you a whole bunch of information. Uh, for each image in the face, uh, image in the, for each face in the image, blah. It gives you a, a face rectangle, the face attributes with emotion. It gives you a whole lot more as well. I've just stripped it all out. It gives you anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, neutral, sadness, and surprise between zero and one. I do see the odd beard. Put your hand if you've got a beard. Yes? Yep. You cannot be 100% happy. 
I'm really sorry about that. It's actually impossible. I've tried. I can only be 99% happy. But that's basically what I used in the Mojifier, right? That's how I built it. That's how I detected emotion inside there. Just to summarize, uh, neural networks are just incredibly powerful. They're incredibly powerful. But actually, conceptually, they're really simple to understand. I explained to you a really basic one in about five, five ten minutes, something like that, right? Pretty basic. Other, other kind of lesson learned here might be, because when I do teach my workshops, I get people ask me questions afterwards. So I just taught them how to do training up a neural network from scratch. Then they ask me, oh, I want to build this. And I'm like, oh, there's 18 APIs available to let you do that, right? So first off, also, especially these days, check to see there's an API that already gives you the answer that you're looking for. Um, next demo. OK. Tends to mobile net, and I'm fine. So I run workshops on machine learning with JavaScript. And one of the workshops in London, a guy called Oliver Turner, uh, then built this demo and uh, sent it back to me. Quite a proud moment when you go to a workshop and one of your students builds something, sends it back, hint, hint. Um, and this is what it does. Basically, if you do, oh, yeah, it's doing a, a search for Unsplash for puppies, getting that image back there. Then the percentage in the bottom left are it trying to figure out what's inside the image. You can see here it's detected, well, here it's detected fountain. Mm. Puppies, 10% a terrier, not bad. If you search Unsplash for I'm fine, it gives returns this image, and it says 78%. T-shirt, not bad, okay, not bad. So the important lesson here is that the only API request that's being made here is to get the image. The actual detection of what's inside the image is all done in JavaScript in the browser. Okay, we've probably heard, I know, I know we've heard of TensorFlow already in this, uh, in this, uh, what are these things called? Conferences, in this conference. Yeah, I arrived last night. From London. I'm doing quite well, I think. Um, so, yeah, TensorFlow. So, ten TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a technology which was open sourced by Google four or five years ago. I can't remember. And it allows you to run um, essentially what, what a tensor is, is actually a multi dimensional array. That's all, that's all a tensor means, like a high dimensional array. So, it allows you to do kind of matrix calculations across a whole bunch of servers. GPUs scale it out massively, right? But it's built in C. It's really hardcore. Um, yeah, but that's basically what it's all about. But start of last year, he created TensorFlow.js. We all like that here, don't we? That little dot .js. Whenever they add that to things, we get really excited. It's like butter, you know? Plain jacket potato. Jacket potato with butter. It's nice, right? TensorFlow.js was launched. Now, it just a month or two ago, I can't remember, the last TensorFlow Summit, it reached 1.0. So it has actually reached a state of maturity now, I'd say. Um, I know we've hopefully gone through this before, but this is all you need to do in order to use TensorFlow.js is, well, if you're me, you use this one, right? If you're a proper JavaScript developer, maybe use that one. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, basically, that's, that's, but the important thing here is that's, that's all you need in order to start playing around with machine learning and JavaScript. This is it. When I first saw TensorFlow.js, I thought it was like node bindings, and you had to install TensorFlow in order to use it. No, it's actually, re, it's actually TensorFlow rewritten from the ground up in JavaScript. It only has like a subset of what's available in the proper TensorFlow, but it has enough to do some pretty some pretty cool stuff. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of things with it. You can do what I just described to you earlier on, which is a trainer model. The whole thing with the neurons and then the weights and then the back propagation, all that tuning stuff. You can do that in TensorFlow.js. You can. Right? Or you can load pre trained models. That's what we like doing. Pre trained models. Now, if you go to TensorFlow.js website, you'll actually find now there's like the, the, it's growing. There's a, there's a set of pre-trained models, very easy pre-trained models that you can just grab from their website and start using. You can also, there's also now scripts available where you can take a model trained up using TensorFlow proper, proper, don't know if that's the right word, but, and then convert those models for use in TensorFlow.js so you can start using them. 
But essentially, if, as long as it's got the JSON file available, you can load it up um, from within the browser. And that's kind of what Oliver used. So he used something called MobileNet, uh, which is just a very uh, an optimized neural network that can detect one of a thousand things, only a thousand things. That's why it wasn't very good. There's only a thousand things it can detect in the world. Um, but it's mobile, so it's been optimized for size, so it can be small enough to use on a mobile. Um, but let's say only like four lines of code. I say it's crazy. Four lines of code in JavaScript to do that, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this wrong statistically, but I think it was 2008, or was it? We, we, we still couldn't detect wh whether an image was a cat or a dog, right? Using whatever servers that we could. Now in JavaScript, we can do this. It's a bit crazy. Um, but it's mobile net, right? So it's, 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 it's not very good. So it wasn't very, very good. It wasn't that good, right? It's, it's useful for a lot of other things. It's useful for something called transfer learning. It's useful for some use cases, but not to really know what's in an image. Like if your life depended on it, you wouldn't use mobile net, right? You'd want to use something that's been trained up on a much larger data set uh, with much more features. Um, these things are kind of gigabytes, terabytes, big and not, not big enough to download onto your computer, but they're available via I'm going to pretend somebody said APIs. You said APIs, right? Yeah. APIs, correct. And then we've got another one called computer vision. Um, and you can, it can detect like an insane amount of information if you give it an image. But one of the really scary things it does, it shocks me, still scares me actually, is that you can give an image and it can give you a human readable description of what's in the image as if a human being wrote it, right? So my friend Sarah Drasna made a, a, a cool demo with this. She thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if you could use that to, to describe the alt text, the alt tag in images? Because we all do that, right? We're all supposed to add alt tags for images, right? We're all doing it, so this is completely unnecessary, I know. But if you did want to use it, you could try it out. Uh, it's a code pen, so um, you, can, you can put in an image and the text at the top um, does anybody know this, this TV show? No? Wow, you're in for a treat. <laughs> this is Halt and Catch Fire. Yeah, it's an amazing TV show. It talks, to, talks about, starts off in kind of 1985 and talks about uh, computing back in those days. And she's one of the, the stars in the show, is Mackenzie Davies. So this is a, when you give it this image, this is the, this is the, the caption it gives it, which is Mackenzie Davies and all standing in front of a building, right? Pretty, pretty good for a service. But, you know, she released it on Twitter, and uh, Twitter is full of really helpful people, you know? So all we're very supportive. Very kindly tell you when something doesn't work, right? And that's what some people said. So they said, uh, oh, this doesn't work. So uh, star-filled sky, text says four, I actually don't know, maybe, is that Asian? I don't know what the what character that is, but whatever it is. It's not accurate, that's true, no? The next one I think is, uh, could be true, could be true, you know? <laughs> I mean, you don't know, <laughs> do you? Those could be dead cats <laughs> stuffed on a bed, really good ones. Um, I really like the next one because because uh, we're half right. We're half right on the next one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's fifty percent. That's pass mark where I come from. Um, <laughs> so uh, just to summarise, and this is probably the one takeaway to take from this, which is TensorFlow.js doesn't have any dependencies. So if you want to play around with machine learning, you just want to do it quickly yourself, you can do it in the browser, you can use it in Node. Well, actually, I'll take that back. TensorFlow.js in Node does have dependencies. Uh, but TensorFlow.js in the browser, you can just start playing around with it with nothing. Uh, MobileNet is a really simple way to analyze images, and it's usually something, if you come to the workshop later on, it's how we start off with. We're just going to start off with MobileNet. Um, 
But if you really want to do some kind of really deep image analysis, you want to use an API, or you want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars training one up or something like that. Right, time for the last one. Okay, it's called image to image. You can find this on the AIJS Rocks website. Let's just take a look at it actually. So this is running in the browser. Okay, you give an outline of a cat, and it draws the rest of the cat. Hmm. It's by a guy called uh, Zaid, who's still at university. I wasn't doing this stuff at university. I was doing other stuff at university. Um, yeah, amazing work, right? How does it work? It uses an algorithm called Pix to Pix. Okay, it was an example of something called uh, a GAN. Uh, a uh, generative adversarial neural network. And what they, how they work is it's two neural networks that are competing with each other, okay? So first off, you have a generator, okay? And you have another one called a discriminator. Now, the generator's job is given some input, whatever input that is, in this case it's an outlines of images of outlines of cats. Given that input, its job is to generate an image of a cat. That's its job, right? Um, and that's what you do. You, you get in a whole set of input outline images. You get a generator to generate outputs. It's not going to do a really good job right now because it's all math.randomed. Right? So it's, not, it's all going to be noise to begin with. But whatever, you take all those images and you combine them with pictures of real cats. You jumble it all together and you pass it into a discriminator. And the discriminator's job is to figure out if an image is of a real cat or of a generated cat. But remember, the discriminator has also been initialized with math.randoms. So it's not going to do a very good job as well, is it? Right? Probably it might get it wrong the first time round. It might think the real cat is a fake cat. But then what do we do when, it, when a neural network is wrong? We train. I'll take it. Train it. We use that back propagation thing. We, we tweak it. We tune it. We tune it until it gets better. Okay? But if it got it right, you detected it right. That means the generator's not doing a very good job. The generator's wrong. So we tune the generator. And that's what's going on. As the generator gets better, the discriminator gets better. As the generator gets better, the discriminator gets better. And they're fighting versus each other. That's what they're doing. Until eventually, the generator is doing such a good job generating cat images, the discriminator can't figure out what's real and what's, what's fake anymore. Right? And then you know you're done. Your training's finished. And what we do is we throw away the discriminator. We don't need that anymore. We just need a generator. And you can export that, if you're careful, you can export it into a, a small enough size that you can load up in the browser. And that's what Zay did. And then you can give it your own outlines, and it can generate images of cats. Okay? That's a GAN. But you don't just have to use it with cats. You can work with anything, right? If you train it with the right data set. Like this. So the left is the input, and the, the right is the output. Okay? But this isn't picks to picks. This is bit to bit. This doesn't work in JavaScript yet, right? But maybe not so far away. Um, how about this example? One input, multiple outputs. Mm. My role silent. But remember, it doesn't. 
it doesn't just have to take outlines as inputs. You can give a GAN whatever you want as an input, whatever you want, right? In this case, you can give it what's called a segmented image, which isn't just an outline. The, the different colors kind of give you a clue as to the, the 3D nature of the image, you know, the depth of the image. And you can do something like this. Okay? She's not dancing. I wish I could get a real life one of, one of these for me when I'm in a club, because I can't really dance very well. But uh, yeah, uh, how about this one? So it's a segmented street image, top left. These two are just different algorithms, and that's the vid to vid one there, again. All right, it's generated, completely generated in the computer. But you don't have to even give it even an image. You don't even have to give it an image. You can just give it text as input. Okay, remember, it's just whatever text you give it, it's going to generate something. So you give it some text as input, and you ask the generator to generate an image. That's what you're doing. So these are two examples here. So in the top one, uh, the input text is this flower has long, thin yellow petals and a lot of yellow anthers in the center. Stage one is after 600 iterations. Stage two is after 1,200 iterations. You can see, well, this one's not very good, but the rest are pretty good, right? And this is another one using birds. So this bird is white, black, and brown in color with a brown beak. Again, stage one is uh, 600, not the best. But stage two is very good. I think there's one here that's not very good. Maybe this one. Oh. Um, So that's it, just to summarize. Yeah. GANs learn to generate new images. Okay, they, they generate. They generate things. That's what's so exciting about them. They're kind of a, the creative side of machine learning, right? They generate things. Discriminators, that's why we, used to, we mostly use machine learning, is just to tell us what something is or isn't, right? But generators can generate, create. That's what's so exciting about them. Um, oh, but uh, they take a lot of compute to train, a lot, more than a normal network. But uh, the generator can be exported and run in the browser. I think I'm over time. Um, thank you very much. If you want to learn a little bit more about TensorFlow.js, I am uh, considering writing a book. So if you take a screenshot of this, if I get 100 sign-ups, I think I'm about 90 right now, so just need 10. Come on. Uh, I will start a Kickstarter or something to, uh, to see, if, see uh, to, to, to fund writing it. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about machine learning, especially if you want to use some APIs, I have uh, a module. If you go there, it's a tutorial step by step which shows you how to build something like the Mojifier, like the Slack bot. So if you want to learn more kind of simpler API route, you can go that way. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.